Hey YouTube family, I want to talk to you guys about this app that's coming out. I guess it's a woman only ride sharing app and it's coming to DC in the fall. I don't know where else it's going to be launching, but um, I'm going to play this clip and a couple others and just go over the information and you guys can let me know what you think and I will definitely be letting you know how I feel about it after we watch a couple things. I just want to point out that rods are tracked in the other apps too. It tells you exactly, I mean, you could see the car on a map and even when you come, um, when you don't get to your destination, you can see the route that you took. So that's already a thing. <music> uh, background checks again already have those. And then I'll have to look up as far as the pay goes because they said that they plan on paying them more. However, I thought it was you got paid based on how often you you drove and that also makes me wonder if this app is going to cost more for the consumer for the people that are using this app now just to bring up the the background check and, and whatnot this is uber and on their website it has this information letting you know that they the the evaluation of background checks can vary from city to city based on the criteria and um, you have to have a minimum of one year licensed driving experience and a, a background check as well. So it goes on to say that um, background checks may include criminal records from throughout a person's adult life, subject to and in accordance with state and local law. Some types of criminal Convictions such as murder, sexual assault, terrorism-related offenses, and other serious criminal convictions will result in disqualification if they occurred at any time in a person's lifetime. So, I mean, it seems like it's um, pretty, you know, um, secure or that they look for certain things and it doesn't matter how old an offense was so that you know that's a good thing but what bothers me about this um, there's a couple things that bother me about this I think that the main thing that bothers me about this is it's like it's unnecessary segregation and it kind of begs the, uh, the question what next are we going to have to have a special app if you're transgender? Are we going to have to have a special app if you're, you know, a certain age or, or a certain uh, race? It's just kind of unnecessary, in my opinion. And the, and the transgender thing is like, um, where do they fit? Do people have to, you know, what are the requirements to even be using this app? But... More importantly, I want to go over some other videos. Officials say Officials Wozni, say Wozni tried, tried... Now we're going to turn to that scary Uber incident. A 16-year-old girl now in custody, accused of killing her driver after he picked her up at a Walmart. If you see Zmarski Avocado here with that story. Good morning, Mara. George, good morning. This is a truly shocking crime. Prosecutors saying a 16-year-old girl, seemingly your typical high school student, brutally murdered a complete stranger. Officials don't have a motive for the killing, and they say the suspect is not talking. Well, now she's facing charges as an adult and is being held without bail. 
This morning, an Illinois teen facing murder charges for what officials are calling a brutal and unprovoked attack on an Uber driver. 16-year-old Eliza Wozni appearing in court after prosecutors say she attacked her Uber driver with a knife and machete early Tuesday for no apparent reason at all, fatally wounding 34-year-old driver Grant Nelson. Only two minutes or so after picking up the defendant, she began to hack at him and stab him from the back of the seat. Prosecutors say Wozni called for an Uber pickup at this Walmart just outside of Chicago around 3.15 Tuesday morning after allegedly stealing a knife and machete. Surveillance video reportedly showing her wow. leaving. So that that's, you know, that's one example, okay? Um, let's see this one. No, is just... Police say they're still looking for the woman in this video who attacked a Lyft driver, spitting on her, ripping out her hair, even vandalizing her vehicle. But as ABC Action News reporter Clifton French tells us, the driver in this video is just as upset with how Lyft handled the situation. I do have a quarter size bald spot and a dime size bald spot in the back of my head. And it's all my hair. It's all natural. This piece of hair is what's left after Michelle, a Lyft driver, was attacked in St. Pete early Saturday night. Police are still searching for the woman in this video, but they tell us they know who she is, identifying her as 28-year-old Stephanie Young. Michelle says she was emotional when she first picked her up, crying as her friends helped her into the car. I said, hello, how are you? She didn't speak back to me, so at that point, I just continued driving in silence. Thank you for extending me your seat cover. She turned the video on about a half mile in. That's the headrest cover for the passenger seat. Young ripped it off to use as a tissue. I said some choice words to her and turned on the camera because I felt that it was something was going to happen. So your ride is over. Michelle pulled into a parking lot where she ran into a security guard. Hey, you don't want to turn her loose, man. You can hear the guard in the background asking Young to let go. Wow. When she did, she took off running. Michelle also lost a fingernail in the altercation. Tonight, Michelle's real concern is how Lyft handled the situation. They didn't help. They weren't helpful. You see, as police were still trying to identify the woman, Lyft told the officer he would need to file a subpoena. So as police continue to search for Young tonight, Michelle says she doesn't feel safe driving for this company anymore. In St. Pete, I'm Clifton French, ABC. Okay, so that's, we had an Uber story. That was a Lyft story. What's this one? Tom, it is said that nothing good happens after 2 in the morning. This story started at 2.11 this morning. You're about to meet the Uber driver who lived it. But first, we have just learned that the woman, the passenger, has now been charged with both assault and interfering with an emergency call. It's the passenger, Arthella Perkins, wishes he had never picked up. I'm not exactly <laughs> deterred from Uber as yet. Um, it was a harrowing experience to go through. Early this morning, he received a ping for a pickup outside a 24-hour fast food restaurant at Westheimer in Hillcroft. But he says there was trouble from the start. The passenger couldn't give him an exact destination. She became more agitated. Just by me giving her respect, she got agitated by that. The more I said ma'am, the more she got upset. That made her mad. Yeah, even playing Christian music, she got upset about that. She didn't like that either. His phone still shows the route from southwest to southeast Houston to a dead-end street off Cullen at a woman who he says called herself Monique in the back seat, already mad then getting violent even as he called 911. Sort of hitting me across the head, across the shoulders. Slap me and close this, and um, I'm still trying to tell operator, and she's still trying to get me to spell the street. And I'm like, ma'am, she's attacking me. Perkins is a former Army medic. This, he says, his first combat situation, but he kept his cool. The passenger didn't, and soon she was in a police car and given a ride herself to jail. Perkins says he'll be more cautious about who he accepts as passengers from now on, but he's reported. Okay. That's another one. I mean, I could keep doing this. Um, this is another All right, one. So, All right, so yes, alcohol? Yes, alcohol. 
Yes, it was yes, early in the morning, so we can so presume we that. We don't know that for sure. Early, early in the morning. morning. She got she tried to get in the car. Somebody else had called this Uber car driver. She tried to get in the car. So it wasn't even there for her? No, no. And the, and the guy was like, oh, that's okay, that's fine. And the Uber car driver's like, no, I am not taking this woman. And that's when she starts the pummeling and the throwing up. And she's saying, I was throwing out of all this stuff. Look, I mean, she's not being prosecuted. She's lucky for that. She should have been prosecuted, I think. But um, so that's paid yet this guy some money. And that, that chick was a doctor. I don't know what's up with these doctors in the news lately. But, yeah, um, my point with these videos is we have a woman driver uh, attacked by a woman. We have a, a male who's uh, killed by a woman. We have, um, let me see, a uh, woman passenger who attacked a male and another woman passenger who attacked a male so my point is who is to say that women are any less violent who's to say that this app is going to be any better for anybody just because of the fact that it's women passengers and women drivers. If there's a violent, intoxicated woman, she's not really going to care um, <laughs> who picks her up, in my opinion. You guys might disagree. Either way, let me know what you think about this because I'm not, a, I mean, maybe because I'm not a feminist, but... I'm not a big fan of the unnecessary segregation and I feel like it just in like installs this this fear that's unnecessary amongst people as if the only way to get home safe is is if a female is, is taking you and that's not even necessarily the case in my opinion. So I'll be back. I just wanted to share this with you guys cuz I'm not really knowing what to think about this.